Okay, guys, so this is Chapter 11, Section 2, um, and we're going to learn about speed and velocity. So if you were to look out the window at a, at a street, um, what would be in motion? Would the cars be in motion? Is the tree in motion? I hope not. That'd be weird. Um, but how can you tell what's really moving? So in Section 1, we talked about frame of reference, and we also talked about distance and displacement. Um, remember, distance is the length of a path between two points, and, displace, or, and displacement is the um, movement from one location to another, and it doesn't take into account distance. So we're going to talk about distance and displacement, and we're going to add a whole other layer to that. We're going to talk about speed. So speed is the ratio of the distance an object moves to the amount of time an object moves. Um, it's measured in meters per second, um, which is, you know, M over S for short. Um, you could, of course, measure this in kilometers per hour if you had a, a larger unit. So make sure to write down this equation because we're going to be using this a lot. Speed is also an instantaneous measurement. So if I said, um, if we were driving in a car and you said, how fast are you going? I could say, you know, I don't know, 60 miles an hour. And that would be my speed at that particular instant. Um, but we can also do average speed. And that's what this equation is for. It's where you take into the total distance, take into account the total distance and the total time. So say we went on a trip and we stopped at the store. That time that we stopped at the store would be included. Um, and then, of course, the total distance that we traveled would be included. So it's an average. And we'll practice this together some, so, so don't be worried. All right, what I want you to do here is I want you to pause the video I want you to use that average speed equation that you just wrote down and see if you can solve this. So you're going to total up the distance, which is 35 kilometers and 53 kilometers. That, that'll be your top number. Um, and then total up the time, which is 0.4 hours and 0.6 hours, and that'll be your bottom number. So total these up. Um, Divide total distance over total time and see what you get. Okay, so here's how you would have totaled those up. So you should have gotten 88 kilometers divided by one hour. So this is pretty easy math. And your final answer should have been 88 kilometers per hour. That's how fast um, you would have been traveling. Okay, so here, here's another one to try. So pause the video again and um, see if you can do this. Okay, did you set it up right? So you should have totaled up your distances, then total up your times, and do that separately. If you try to punch it all in the calculator at once, it gets jumbled. Um, I've, I've told you before, if you write out your problem and then punch it in, it, it'll save you a lot of frustration. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. Once again, pause the video, practice this, try this, see if you can do it. So we're still doing average speed, so total up those the distances and then total up the time. Okay, so you should have gotten 62 kilometers per hour. There is a lot of information here. Don't be freaked out by the graphs because I know you guys have been doing this in um, algebra and pre-algebra and you've been doing slope and rise over run and um, all this stuff that you were probably or maybe hoping that you didn't have to see again. But the thing that I like about um, graphs in science and, and applying this math in science is you give meaning to the numbers. So check out um, this first one right here. 
Okay, so if I look at this, I've got I've got distance. I've got distance over here, and I've got time. So this is nothing, here's my bad drawing again. This is nothing that we um, haven't discussed already. So from this, I could get a speed, and the speed is the slope of my line. So if you look a little closer at this graph and you look at the distance traveled, this object traveled 250 meters, and it traveled 250 meters in 10 seconds. So we could get the speed by dividing 250 by 10, and our speed would be 25 meters per second. So that's our speed. Pretty easy. You can just get that from the math. You don't have to do um, y equals mx plus b. You can just look at the numbers. So check out um, graph b. I can already tell without doing any math that this speed is not as great because the slope is not as steep. Um, it's, so graph B, the object's moving slower than graph A. So we would, um, we could figure out our speed the same way um, by dividing 125 meters by 10 seconds. And this object would be moving 12 meters per second. So yeah, it's moving about half as fast as graph A. Um, go ahead and look at graph C. If you look at graph C, we could calculate um, a couple of different things. We could calculate instantaneous speed, and the way you would do instantaneous speed is you would look at each individual section of the line. So here's one section, here's another section, and then um, here's another section. So you'd look at each, um, each slope of the line, and we could have three different instantaneous speeds. Or we could calculate the average speed. So we'd look at total distance over total time, just like we've been doing. Um, I want you to check out segment, um, or the segment in the middle here, um, this, this smaller one, so right here. And um, what do you think happened here? If you look a little closer, four seconds has passed, but no distance has changed. So this would be a, like an object coming to a stop for, for four seconds and then continuing on its way. So a lot of information we can pick out from these graphs. And if we look at um, their titles, um, in this first one, graph A, this one is moving at a constant high speed. Um, well, compared to the other, it's higher. <laughs> if we look at graph B, this is moving at a constant low speed. And then if we, excuse me, look at graph C, we've got varying speeds. We've got um, speed changed three times. So you can get a lot of information from these graphs and, um, and there is application for what you've been doing in math. Things. Okay, so we've talked about speed and we've talked about average speed, but we need to talk about velocity. Now velocity, we're just adding one more variable. We've got speed, which is distance over time, but we're also considering the direction that the object is moving. So um, this cheetah, what's his velocity? We don't know because we don't know which direction he's moving. So um, this is where we use vectors, and we'll talk more about these, but a vector is, um, in physics, it's drawn as an arrow, and it shows you which direction. Um, and, and that's important when we get into um, more difficult calculations and things you'll do in high school. Um, but this is super important to know. A longer vector represents, here's my bad drawing again, represents a faster speed, and a shorter vector represents a slower speed. And it's, um, it sounds really simple. So I would just draw a short arrow to represent a slower speed. And to represent a faster speed, I would just draw a longer arrow. And it's also going to be drawn in the direction that it's moving. So um, these would be moving to the right. But um, we could also draw an arrow moving to the left, just depending on which way our object's moving. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this briefly, but we are going to practice this in class together. Now, um, I know you're also learning about this in math. Um, um, I, algebra students should have learned this already, and pre-algebra students are just getting um, used to this. 
So, um, of course, write down this equation. This is the Pythagorean theorem. And here's another place where math can be applied. So if you look at my picture, I have three different vectors. I have one here, I have one here, and I have one at the bottom. And if I said, hey, what is their, their combined speed? You, um, you could tell me by plugging them into the Pythagorean theorem. Now, once again, we're going to do this in class. So here's... Here's all of them combined. You've got your different vectors. And then we could come up with um, their combined. Okay, guys, so once again, here's one um, uh, another practice problem. We've got a couple more um, going over speed and average speed and even the Pythagorean theorem. So um, pause this and solve this real quick, and then I will tell you the answer. Okay, so the woman um, went 10 kilometers, um, and then she went 10 more kilometers, so she's got a total of 20 kilometers, and that's going to be over her time. So she went one hour, then she stopped another hour, and then she had two hours, so for a total of four hours. So 20 divided by four, that's 20 kilometers over four hours. That would be five kilometers per hour, which is, um, which would be number C or letter C. Okay, pause this, see if you can answer it. Did you get it? The correct answer for this one is C, speed. Okay, we've got two more. So um, pause this, try to solve this. Now you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem here. So that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you, it doesn't matter which one's a and it doesn't matter which one's b. Um, you just have to plug them in. So go ahead and pause it and see if you can solve it. Okay, the correct answer here would be 5 kilometers per hour, which is B. So 4 squared is 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9, and that's 25. And then the square root of 25, because we're solving for C, would be 5. All right, last question. The um, SI unit for speed of an airplane is miles per hour. Is this true or false? Hopefully you um, thought this was false because we don't use miles in science. We don't use miles per hour in science. We use um, the metric system. So we use kilometers per hour or meters per second or um, something that has meters in it. <laughs> okay, and that's it for your notes. And we will practice this and discuss this more in class.